Thanks, Randy. I'd like to thank uh, Dean Mills is here, and thanks for the Reynolds Fellowship, Dean. Uh, it turned out to be a terrific thing. The team that Reynolds assembled to help with uh, our book, or, or I, I don't suppose we should call it a book, actually, uh, digital teaching tool. I'm open to ideas. The thing that isn't, the thing that was formerly known as the book. Uh, thanks, thanks for the great team that, that you assembled. Uh, Sir Ken Robinson, in a, in a TED talk that, is, that has been seen by something like 15 million people, said that the big problem in education today is that we are educating people for a world that we cannot conceive. Think about it, uh, uh, college uh, freshman, uh, average time, six years, gets out, and in six years, what will the media world be like? You know, six years ago, social and mobile media were not dominating. Now they are, six years from now. And so the challenge of how do you educate for a world you cannot conceive? Uh, he says creativity is now just as important as literacy. Creativity in that environment becomes just as important as, as literacy, and his complaint about education, which he puts far more eloquently than I, is that it essentially beats the creativity out of people. And, and so um, uh, how do you put the creativity back in? Uh, he had a quote that's he, where he said, uh, if you aren't prepared to be wrong, you can't do anything creative. So I'm here to tell you that we were prepared to be totally wrong. <laughs> And, uh, and in, in, in creating this digital teaching uh, tool. We wanted to see if we could extend the reach of some of the blog posts that we were doing and speeches and things on our website where we had about uh, an average of about 5,000 uh, uh, folks uh, paying attention to the different kinds of journalism reform, journalism education reform posts that we were, that we were making. Uh, it turned out that that, that did happen. Uh, it went up to about 20,000 when we packaged everything into this uh, teaching tool. Uh, we wanted to see if it would help uh, change anything in journalism education, help speed up any of the reforms. And a lot of things happen. It's difficult to attribute them uh, to searchlights and sunglasses. But one thing that, that you could attribute is that I get a call from, from uh, the Netherlands and the next thing I know, I'm over there talking to them. And the next thing I know, they've put up 2 million euros to create regional journalism centers based on a teaching hospital model of journalism education. So you never know what's going to happen when you get a Reynolds Fellowship. You write something here, and it comes out over there. That's the digital age. Um, we wanted to see if a digital teaching tool was easier uh, to update and more appropriate to what we're trying to keep track of than the printed book. It seems kind of crazy that we're going to depend on a 500-year-old uh, you know, vehicle of communication to keep track of something that's changing every day. Um, that uh, part, uh, there are mixed results. In some uh, cases, uh, it's much easier the way that we did it to update it. I'll give you a couple examples. And in other cases, it wasn't. And if we could go back and do it again, we would probably do it differently. Let me give you a quick tour for those of you who haven't uh, seen it. Now, this is a, a HTML5 uh, responsively designed website uh, with uh, Parallax, which is the, which is the, uh, the scrolling effect that creates multiple layers when you scroll. It was uh, made, uh, sort of popularized by uh, Snowfall, and although this was a very, very, very low budget version. And without the resources of the New York Times to do the same thing. There's something called the learning layer, which are the red buttons. You can turn them off, you can turn them on, right? They're off, and they're on. And the learning layer is uh, a thousand lessons and resources and uh, activities uh, assembled by the Reynolds team. 
of educators, high school, college, graduate students, and a variety of different folks. I think the designer thinks that's me on the beach there. <laughs> and I don't have a bathing suit like that, so it couldn't possibly be me. So, uh, you know, there's regular, regular text, as, a, as, you would, as you would see in a book, uh, but then there are all kinds of other things. Uh, the Knight Foundation has dominated the uh, Ed Shift hashtag uh, this morning, uh, all of which flows into, into the book, uh, talking about this event that we're, that we're at right now and the live stream that's going on. So uh, anyone who taught, you know, wants to communicate to Media Shift, to Ed Shift, uh, about journalism education innovations, uh, uses that hashtag, it flows into, flows into the book. So um, there's a directory of everything that's in the learning layer, and uh, it's, it's, it's massive. Uh, you can uh, print it all out, or you can, uh, which some teachers wanted to do, uh, or you can uh, simply use it digitally. And so this is just gives you a sense of all the different sort of uh, sub-chapters that are in there. Uh, there's something called um, uh, there's something called a uh, Easter eggs that we, we that we came up with uh, for folks who like to just wander around and uh, look for uh, fun things to do. There's one behind here. We don't have time to play the video, but it's a video of Arthur C. Clarke in 1970 explaining that someday you'll be sitting here with a terminal connected to all the information you need for your daily life. And he's saying it to an Australian broadcast uh, interviewer, and there's a little guy there, and there's mainframe computers all around him. It's embedded behind the satellite because it was Arthur C. Clarke, the science fiction writer who conjured the idea of geo stationary satellites. And my point about that is that the science fiction writers have had a pretty good track record when it comes to imagining this future that we can't conceive. There's a chapter on journalism education, and uh, within that is uh, uh, an example of you know, how easy it can be to update things. You know, we wanted to uh, talk about what we're talking about today is green shoots. So here are some, uh, it's a long list of schools, many of, many of which are here today, and different kinds of things that they're doing, from Morgan uh, State to University of Florida to uh, West Virginia and, and so on. And, oh, well, we shouldn't look at that paragraph because that's what Katie's about to do next. So that, that's, that's pretty good when you can up, update it to the exact uh, second. The, 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 uh, the, the issue, though, is that the way that we did it, this, these sections, the text sections, because of the parallax, we kind of locked them in to the lengths. So that became a problem, because then when we had other sorts of um, trend pieces and um, things making sense of all of the new developments, it was harder to get those in. You'd have to, you know, you have to take a section out, put a, put a section in, it's got to be exactly the same length. So the lesson was when you're, this was the same thing that happened to us at the museum. When you're designing something, think ahead to how you're going to have to change things out. Museum designers just love to make these beautiful cases that are fantastic. And then when it comes to put the new artifact in, you find out you need a, you know, a forklift to get the new, to get the new newspaper in there. So, so the same thing applied to to searchlights. Um, we we uh, uh, we continue to fool around with it. Uh, we don't in, in, tend to be in the in the book business, uh, but um, but we think that we've done what we set out to do, which was to create a demonstration model and to show that you can use digital teaching tools and you can keep up with the things that are, the things that are going on. So we think from that point of view, uh, it's been a success. The other big thing we learned, I 
touched on yesterday, which is when you have a, a, a group of uh, collaborative group working on something like this, and the younger members of the group come up with all kinds of ideas that make you uncomfortable, like putting you in a bathing suit on the beach. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's uh, the old newspaper editor in me wanted to say, not in my newspaper, the, uh, the new open collaborative team member in me said, okay, if you think that's uh, good, explain, <laughs> explain, why you're, explain why you're doing it. And it turned out that, you know, they had a John Stewart-like idea that, you know, you need to wrap humor through what you're doing and you can't be always deadly serious. So, so I, w I went along with it and it, it worked out. Okay, that wraps up the quick tour of searchlights. Um, as we saw a minute ago uh, on the homepage, uh, there was this little uh, tag for edge shift. And uh, so I'm, I'm happy to tell you that the next person coming up today is uh, Katie Culver, uh, University of Wisconsin uh, professor and curator of EdShift, which is where uh, the conversation, go ah, see now Miranda has fixed this, so now Miranda's in here. Thank you, Miranda. It's not for Knight Foundation all anymore. Um, but uh, as curator of EdShift, Katie uh, sees um, you know, dozens of, of green shoots as they're happening and it sort of goes around and collects them in a, in a, in a way. And, and so uh, it's, still, it's great to have her here today to be able to tell us a little bit about what kind of pattern she's recognizing and how uh, these innovations are grouping which I think is an, uh, uh, something that I want to uh, hear from all of you uh, and, and think about during the whole day. 